I was going to try to have Kylie pipe in this, the buzz that y'all have been used to hearing for the last two hours. So let's we'll start there, God. What a great job by our marketing people, Elvis Moy and his team, and then Julie Kane and her game day people. If, if y'all didn't go out there and watch those buses arrive and leave, it was, uh, I mean, it, I put them up with Chick-fil-A on rivaling, uh, handling big crowds. So uh, great day for us. We obviously needed them all the way to the buzzer. Um, and what was the crowd? 11,000. Kylie, where does that rank? Fourth best ever. That's good. Yeah, just sticking with that, it appeared to us up there that the crowd noise prevented them from getting a timeout at the end. Um, was that what happened? I, I don't know. I mean, it's it's one of those things that it happened so fast. I, I honestly thought they were going to foul us. Uh, we talked about if they foul us, obviously we got it in the people's rides hands. And if they don't, let's make sure we end up with a shot. Don't turn it over. Don't let the shot clock go and buy, get a shot up because the time that the ball is in the air, there was only about a three second differential. Get a shot up. By the time they track it down, there's not going to be very much time. Now they, anybody on their bench could have called a timeout or the kid on the rebound. Sure. But that's a hard thing to work on day to game two, you know, end of game situations. But I think the crowd helped us in a number of ways throughout the game. And that's certainly one that's worth, maybe asking them about, but it, it was definitely uh, deafening at times in there. And then to build up that 24 point lead and then just kind of have it slip a little bit, what was going right to get to that lead? And then what do you think kind of changed? Yeah. Well, the lineups was part of it. I'm I've told everybody I was a little stubborn, maybe a little bit too long, maybe again, one possession worth of stubbornness of letting us play through some things. I hadn't called a timeout. I wanted to see where we were at. I need to see what do we have depth. I've been talking about us having depth. Do we? I need to see it in a game, and I need to see those lineups and what happens when Mac gets three fouls and let Mac see what it looks like when she's got three fouls. Um, so my stubbornness was probably the large part of it. Obviously, they made us pay every time we made a mistake. But again, kind of like the other night, I thought it was quick shots. Uh, and then a quick shot leads to – we call them shot turnovers. It leads to them getting a three on the other end. Uh, we had some lineups in there that uh, we didn't practice together in defensive things. So those are all things that I anticipate and happen. Um, you know, I want us to be able to later on close those leads, take 24 to 35 to 40, and that's something we've got to get to doing. Um, but I also can't do that playing just five or six kids. We've got to have some depth. And then last thing for me, um, one of our favorite numbers to look at is just that plus minus. And Sailor um, and Talia both and Michaela all up there. Just what do you think of those three on the court together at the same time? Well, that's a core. You know, that's the core when you start. And it's not just in games. We chart that number in practice as well. Um, and and that's a core group that that defensively and offensively present problems for people. So we it's a number we will continue to monitor. I think it's a lot. If, if I was a player, that's the first number I would look at. Because that tells you how you do with every lineup. It tells you how you do in every matchup. Uh, and that's a big number. So um, I thought they were really good in it. Um, and, and you know, with with you look at Miriam and you look at Sam, that zero can be, especially with Sam, that's because of the minutes that she played. You know, sometimes it can be a little deceptive, uh, but it means something. It doesn't mean everything, but it doesn't mean nothing. You know, it's only two games, but Talia is averaging 27 so far. I mean, I know you guys had a lot of confidence in her coming into the season, but is there anything in particular she's maybe doing slightly better, exceeding your expectations in for the first two games? Defensively, you know, she's still making some freshman mistakes, and there's, you know, some things. Some of those turnovers today are weight room, you know, things. The one she got her into a bad spot, it's just a weight room. I think she only had one, didn't she? No, five, sorry. Some of those turnovers, I think, are just maturity things, being a freshman, uh, getting her um, in the right spots. I got to start being able to move her around a little bit too. You know, that's what we're going to have with Sam and Mac. I know I can put Mac out there at any point in time and be our racker. She's been doing it for four years. I know I can put Sam out there. She's been doing it for, for, for two years now. Let's let Talia learn those things so we can be able to play all three of them at some point in time in that spot. So uh, she's a really good film watcher. Um, she's a really good analyzer and talker. Um, and, and as she gets more comfortable, uh, I think you'll see, um, fewer turnovers, uh, and more made shots. Just, do you mean like maybe more comfortable off the ball in, yeah. in certain times, like yeah, and, just in possession? As a and, and trusting that, you know, if you, just because you start off the ball, it doesn't mean it doesn't end up coming back to you. 
you know, it's a it's a hard thing to do to have the ball in your hands for I mean, ask Sam and Mac. That's why we've tried to play those three together to rotate them. Um, but I'm gonna expect a lot early from everybody and then we'll coach through them, learn from our mistakes. And last thing for me, the the assists tonight were up compared to the first game for, you know, five to fourteen is yeah. Is that a number like especially with the three guards that you're gonna play so much that kind of needs to be higher to kind of gauge your success on the rest of the year? A lot of that's going to have to do with what the other coach decides to do with their game plan. You know, the other, we shot 44 free throws the other night. They were coming out and getting on us, so we were going to have to go off the bounce a lot, which is going to take your assist total down. Um, I look, you know, I look for our turnovers per the number of possessions in a game. Uh, you know, 16 is a high number, but that was a high. We took 90, how many shots did we take? 88 shots, 18 turnovers. That number is a little high for us, especially the type of turnovers they were. Um, but yeah, I think a lot of it has to do with how a team de de decides to defend you. They were pressing us to slow the game down. I thought late in the game, they got the tempo going like they wanted it to. And that third quarter, when we were really good, we had it going the way we wanted to. So I think you'll see us fluctuate from game to game based on kind of how the other team decides to, are they going to pressure our guards and force them to go off the bounce? Or are they going to let us move it around a little bit more? They played zone for probably 20 possessions tonight as well, which traditionally is, you know, you're not going to be able to attack the basket as much. Hey, so obviously um, we don't have to tell you 24 point lead gets cut down to three. Uh, I'm just wondering what your emotions are like uh, on the sideline when you see that lead starting to slip away. Yeah, Y'all watch. I'm pretty calm. I think, I mean, um, we used our timeouts effectively. I saved those things. I took, I think I saved us two turnovers with timeouts. Um, I don't get too high or too low uh, during games. I'm more emotional in practice and we'll learn from it. I'll be emotional in the film room. I'll be emotional in practice. But if you see me being too emotional over there, then my kids are going to be that way. Um, so, I mean, I'm always counting numbers. I'm not, I'm pretty good at math, but man, I can't add scores up sometimes fast enough. I looked up one time and I was like, okay, it's down to 11. I said, Hey, if it gets under 10, let's take one. I thought we managed it. I thought we managed our timeouts. Max fourth foul was tough. You know, that was, that was a tough one. And at the time that it came, uh, it kind of probably disoriented us a little bit, but if y'all ever see me panicking, I, I, you know, feel free to write about it, but I don't, I hope I don't. It's been 10 years now. I don't panic too often. I don't get too emotional high or low. I'm not going to be, um, hopefully I'm, I'm pretty steady. And then after the first quarter, the, the girls really came out and started shooting the ball. Well, uh, what, what advice did you have for them? So on the top of the board in there, it says, do the easy things like do easy early, it took us a while. We did not do e easy right off the bat. If you look at the first quarter, like we were trying some shots that I, don't, I haven't recognized in practice. We're trying some passes that we don't have a, a breakdown for or a drill that we've done. I think that was the excitement of the crowd. I think it's our group's desire. We have a really group that likes to please and you have pleasers. And when you have pleasers, any one mistake can lead to multiple mistakes. And that, that middle of the second, the end of the first quarter into the start of the second quarter. Um, you know, I thought we had a group that was doing easy things. They were making the easy pass. They were making the easy cut. We weren't really trying to do hard things. Um, they have a very veteran team that took advantage of it. They never quit. They didn't get down. Um, and then, you know, we, the, the momentum swung their way and, and they kept it all the way through the, to the, the very end there. I thought we managed the, we took the air out of the ball for about, from about the three more minute mark. Uh, those of y'all have been following us for the seven years. I, I've probably done that a handful of times, but after what happened the other night, I was a little worried that we might take a quicker shot. So we, we put the woe out there. Um, the other thing I'll point to is we didn't get a chance really to watch a lot of film on the last game for this game because of the quick turnaround. Uh, we'll get a day off tomorrow. Coaches will have an opportunity to put together some film for the kids to share. I think those are areas you'll see us continue to improve on throughout the year. Last thing for me, uh, obviously a morning start. Do you think that uh, affected the team at all? I hear a lot of talk about it on football. We only do it like one time a year. So I don't know that I have enough data. Uh, it, we don't have a shoot around, which is different because it's so early. Uh, we don't get them together to feed them. That, my group has convinced me that rest is better than uh, prep. Um, so I don't know. I'll, I'll continue to learn about this particular team. But, uh, you know, I think our next, we may have a noon tip, but uh, that's a significant difference. I've always heard football coaches say that it's a disadvantage for the home team. Am I right that they say that? Uh, I don't know. Uh, I think it just had to do with our a lot of excitement around the crowd. 
uh, a lot of energy in the building and our kids have a strong desire to please two things number one at age 60 i'm going to uh, validate that thing about the rest over prep good i i I, I, I trust them. You know, they're they're really good at talking about it and knowing what the difference is. And uh, we had to expend a lot of energy the other night, and we had to practice hard for these guys because, again, if you look at this team, they run a lot of actions. I mean, Caitlin Young is as hard to prep as we'll have all year because her usage rate, if you look at how many times they throw her the ball and how many actions are run to her, uh, we, had to, we had to put a lot of time. So hopefully that rest – was the, the difference in the three points. Second thing is you were 28 or 44 from free throw line the other night. Sailor comes out and misses the first two, but then you hit 17 of your next 20. Sometimes that gets lost in the box score a little bit, probably not coaches, but yeah. how important was it to to get on a streak of hitting them uh, so when you got toward the end of the ball game that you had confidence you could knock them down? Yeah, well, you're that veteran and knows that a made free throw stretches a lead one point and two makes it stretches it two. And that's a huge difference. I don't know that it ever got to one possession except for that last trip. You know, we had the ball. They'd cut it free. We had the ball to inbound it and draw a foul. We've got good free throw shooters. Uh, uh, they put a lot of um, work into it, and I think it's going to be something that that will be a strength of ours. Uh, 44 the other night was a huge number because of the style of play. You're not going to shoot as many against the zone, but uh, you said it was 17 in a row in the middle? Yeah, I wouldn't have known that until I went back and watched film. Thanks for that, I'll use that and... and the other thing is obviously you had a lot of kids here screaming today and that's a big thing but you got to eleven thousand because you have a significant amount of people that show up on a yeah. friday morning to talk a little bit about that well that's what we were saying in that you know elvis goes out and does his job and then our regular group shows up you know for an early tip and an early start and shows our kids we talk all the time about visual support and evidence of support and you know the kids see that it does their heart good and they're not in their normal seats either you know, that's this is the one day that our ticket holders kind of get dislodged a little bit. Um, but yeah, for us to get that we, ten thousand was kind of our goal, and to to shatter that, uh, I think is it talks about where Arkansas sports is in general. I think we got a soccer. Do we have soccer tonight? Uh, we've got cross country going on, a regional championship, isn't it? Right now, how do we do? Do you know? Anybody know? I think it started about the same time. So, just so much excitement on campus. Volleyball's, you know, doing what they're doing. Um, Coach Pittman's got him excited for the game tomorrow. I'm glad we're off so we can go enjoy that. But, um, you know, I, I think when people talk about our fans, this is the example that I set that when I show it to them. I said, we got a 1030 game. And, yeah, we had 7,000 kids, but there was another 3,500 people that show up for a 1030 game. So I'll be sure to point that out to our kids. And But, again, if you, if you can't stop thinking, uh, thinking, thinking uh, the group that um, put this day on was big. Coach Saylor talked about this team not having exhibition games, kind of learning how to play together. What through just two games has stood out to you that maybe needs to improve a bit more than yeah. you thought it would, and then vice versa, what's been better than you thought it would? Shot be? shot selection. You know, we're taking some shots. I think that once they look at it, they'll go, "Oh yeah, I probably had somebody else a little bit more open." Um, I think it's going to help us. Like when we encourage them in practice to work on their ball handling at speed. It's hard to get that simulated in practice. I got plenty of film on about everybody now to say if, if you you're going to have to practice it at that speed for it to feel the same in a game, um, and you can't create that in a closed door scrimmage because the atmosphere isn't there. Um, and I may have made a mistake by not having an exhibition game. Uh, we'll we'll tackle that one in the off season. Uh, but at this point in time, the thing that I'm learning from us, what we did do, and that has helped us in these just as much as it's hurt us. Touched on it a little bit, but what needs to improve in terms of teams throwing full court pressure at you? What needs to improve in terms of Yeah, us on? being able to continue to attack without turning it over. Like I think somebody pointed out earlier, when the good was good, it was layup or an open three. When the bad was bad, it was throwing it to somebody in the other uniform. So, I mean, you know, the, the amplitude of the good and the bad hopefully gets more toward the middle. Uh, but I don't want to get away from the good either. Uh, I, I said to Phil on the radio, with our team, with our style, it's a lot easier to say whoa later in the year than it is to say go later in the year. So I want us to be uber aggressive. I want us to learn from our mistakes now because it doesn't really matter what we do in the, uh, in the off season, in the preseason, not in women's basketball. You have to, in the SEC, 
get to 500, to even have an opportunity to make it to the NCAA tournament. I could have scheduled completely different teams. Uh, Monroe, y'all, I told y'all first and foremost, that wasn't the team we scheduled. We knew this team was going to be good. We knew. I watched them beat Kentucky last year in Rupp. Or, I mean, in Memorial, I think. It was at Kentucky. We knew this team was good. We knew Caitlin Young is probably going to be the OVC Player of the Year again and will be up for the Mid-Major Player of the Year awards. We knew they had pieces around her. I, I know the job that Coach Turner does with her team. We knew how good the team was. And again, I'm look at where we got next. We got Coach Foley next. Uh, we got another new coach coming in uh, relatively. And we're going to Arkansas State. Most people wouldn't do that game. Uh, we got UCA coming in with a new coach. Then we've got tournaments that are going to challenge some of the best teams. So I'm confident in our kids. Uh, we're going to stick together. Uh, our, our group is very united. I don't know what they said in here, but uh, it's as united as a team as I've had here. Uh, and I, I think going through hard times and tough times is what keeps you together. So uh, I'm not going to try to create anymore. Those are our two games for that. Uh, I will be less stubborn and uh, make sure that we try to finish those 24-point leads or, or at least not get it down to the last possession. And then you touched on this the other night, but double-digit rebounds again for Sailor. Just how impressive has she been rebounding so far through two games? You know, when we first saw her as a recruit, um, that was what stuck out to me was how many times she got her hands on the ball. She got 12 rebounds, but I think she tipped another three or four to somebody else that got them. Um, and I think sometimes that's a rebound she would have had, but she realized it was better. Uh, she's going to shatter the records as it, it is be, if she plays and stays healthy and plays enough minutes, which obviously you see how important she is to us. She's a double, double, you know, but uh, a lot of people, uh, don't understand how grueling it is to go after every single ball that goes up. We have a grading system that doesn't judge the 12th. Our grading system judges how many times you had the opportunity to rebound and how many times you did. And her first game was 96%. So that's a, that's a, I round up, that's an A plus. So uh, she wants it. That's her role. She accepts it. She knows how much we need it. Um, you know, and then it tips balls around. We, we got beat on the boards a little bit. Some of that's to the dead ball rebounds, but um, she she is a kid that we expect to get every miss, and she does too. We'll go Daniel and then questions for the lower offense. I guess they, they quietly ended up with 15 offensive rebounds. Is that just part of the style that they play and all the long shots that sometimes end up out there? I, I mean, I think with Learn, it's effort. That That's a kid that transferred from Purdue – I think she she is a tough, tough kid to keep off the glass. Uh, and we're going to give up a few because of our little guards. I'm, I'm okay with those. Uh, but, yeah, I think because uh, they were in um, comeback mode, they were being really aggressive. And we didn't make them pay. Uh, we didn't make them pay as much in transition. So, um, at number concerning for me overall based on the number. They missed 40, let's see, 30 for – 79 so that's 49 misses is that right and we get they get a third of the 15 of those that's that's okay it's just okay we got to do better and then I, I posed this question to the girls that were in here I guess from your vantage point when the lead was shrinking did you see anyone that stuck out that was you know maintaining composure on the court and keeping things together I thought they all did I mean I heard them talking to each other there wasn't this is one of those deals where you have to be loud and you're because you have to hear. So I think there are a lot of kids saying things loudly to each other, but their tone and their words are really good. Unless something happened that I was unaware of. I don't know what they said in their answers. Yeah. Just, just kept it together. And, and what we try to do in games is manage the moment. And you get a reset. Hey, here's where the bonuses are. Here's what the lead is. We're getting in the bonus. Let's be aggressive. We're about to put them in the bonus. And I think when you talk about things like that, it keeps the talk away from something that happened in the first half. I do think our group's really good at moving on and not letting one mistake compound another. It was good to hear them say that, and then we'll see how we do in the film room. And Little Rock questions? Yeah, just you have a lot of respect for Coach Foley. Yeah. What do you think of the team that he has this year? I hadn't had a chance to watch him enough yet to know. I, I caught him online a little bit the other day. Um, so I'll have to go to work. I'll start working on them after we have lunch today. It's not going to be a big surprise. Joe Foley does Joe Foley. 
as well as, you know, he does him. He does their team. They are, they're very identifiable. You know there's it's going to be, be a low possession game. You know they're going to make you work to defend multiple motion actions, and none of us can predict. There's not a coach in the world that has predicted what Joe Foley was going to do successfully uh, in a game. So we'll work on concepts. Um, we'll get rest. I don't know if they play today or before they play us again. Okay, so we'll have a we'll have a little bit of a rest advantage, and then uh, you know, but you know what you're going to get with Coach Foley, and you're right. I do have I've said it in the past. Y'all y'all know my affinity and how much I appreciate what he did for me when I was a high school coach and with the teams I had. And uh, he's been a friend, uh, a tough competitor on the golf course, and um, somebody that um, you know for me uh, is has made an impact in what we do and how we do it. Not everybody uh, uh, favors playing the in-state schools, but I know you and I do. Yeah. Uh, and you've got four of them this year. Just talk about that. And uh, I mean, you know, taking taking the team to the to the other part of the state is good and all that. Uh, Scary. Sides here, but it, but just talk about that again. And and you know, each coach that comes in here or you go play talks talks about that as well. Well, I grew up uh, not understanding why they didn't. You know, and I wanted to see those games, and I understood after I got older why, and I got it. But then the second that the 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 people way up the up chain for me said it was okay, the board of trustees and Hunter and my bosses, I, I just thought it was for women's basketball. And I say this every time: I don't know anything about any other sport, <clears throat> but for women's basketball, our state needs it. I think, um, I think our state is underrated when it comes to our high school programs, our grassroots programs. And if we don't play those teams, and I also said it that first year, the day is coming when we're going to lose one of those. And everybody's going to go, see, I told you. It's coming. These teams are too good. You saw what UAPB did on their Oregon road trip. I mean, they had Oregon State down to the buzzer, and they played the next night at Oregon. They've got three McDonald's All-Americans on their team. Um, you know, the Arkansas State team I watched on film yesterday, they're a lot like the team we just played. Um, the job that – uh, I mean, we already talked about Coach Foley, but then Tony uh, at UCA is somebody I've known for a, a number of years, and he's gone in there and gotten a, assembled a squad that he likes to the, the, play the style he likes. I just think we have to do it in women's basketball to grow our high school sports, our grassroots programs, and then each other. Um, I pull for all of those guys except for the night that we play them. <laughs> We've been to UAPB. We've been to Little Rock multiple times. This will be our second trip back to Arkansas State. And we're trying to schedule a game in UCA at UCA and Conway for next year. I, I don't think it's got to be a game where they just come to us. I think we have to be able to go there and our kids have to be able to understand the importance of it. And um, I think if you don't play them, I mean, we not, might not play all four of them every single year for the next four years. We may go two and two. Um, but I, I do think we have that responsibility um, to try to grow our sport and grow our game.